Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know I have disappeared for like a few weeks already because, you know, I have a lot of things to do. So today, we're going to continue with our teaching um, videos where we're going to do Form 4 syllabus today, which is Form 4 Chapter 3. Uh, we're going to do one of the subtopics today. Lah, okay, so as you can see, my background changes and my hair color also changes. It was purple color and then now it's become like gray color already. So yeah, it means that it's a long time that you guys haven't seen me already. And also I have a new logo thanks to Liang J Mathematics. He actually helped me to create it, not create it, like edit some of the things here. And this is my usual, my usual attire where I like to wear crop top a lot. So yeah, this is me. Hopefully it looks like me, lah, okay. So if you haven't subscribed to his channel yet, you can subscribe to his channel. His, his YouTube name is known as Liang J Mathematics. He's a very legend in teaching mathematics. Okay, you can check him out. So let's continue and let's start our class today. Okay, so what we're going to do today is Form 4 Chapter 3, which is plus non memory because I have students from Form 5 2020 or until right now, uh, or, or, or Form 4, the new batch of Form 4, they actually asked me, what is a plasma membrane? Now, this plasma membrane thing, right, is very important because it's a basic of basic of this entire chapter. When we talk about plasma membrane, we have to remember one fact is that plasma membrane has a characteristic. It is known as selectively permeable or they call it as a semi-permeable. What does semi-permeable mean? Okay, the meaning of semi-permeable, it means it only allows certain substances to pass through. What does certain mean, okay? Certain means it only allows small substances to pass through. It only allows not charged ion to pass through. Okay. What are the things that it will affect it to pass it through or not? Okay, there are three factors. Number one is size of the molecule, whether it is a large or small. Okay. Number two, polarity of molecule. Polarity means it is a water soluble or a lipid soluble substances. Ionic charge means it is a charged substance, that's right. So it will affect the thing that can pass through the plasma membrane or not. So if it's a charge, if it's a polarity, or if it's a size, they have to use other things to allow it to pass through the semi the, the plasma membrane. They cannot just pass it through the phospholipid bilayer. So they have to use another transporter. In exam, they will ask you, explain what is a plasma membrane. Explain the characteristic of plasma membrane. How are you supposed to explain the characteristic of plasma membrane? Okay, in exam, you must, 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 okay, must write the word certain, okay? If you didn't write the word certain, your answer is wrong. Definitely wrong because that is the meaning of semi permeable. It only allows what certain substances to pass through. That is the meaning of certain semi permeable. You definitely must write the word certain. And the other question they'll ask you what are the substances? Uh, what are the uh, factors that it will affect the molecule to pass through the plasma membrane? Okay, the factors that affect it to pass through is number one, size. Number two is polarity. The other one is ionic charge. So they only ask you to write. Lah. They didn't ask you to explain one, so don't have to worry about it. Just have to state the factors. There are three factors. Lah. They ask you to write two or they write one. So this is the characteristic of plasma membrane. Okay, plasma membrane. Now, Besides this thing, what else you have to know? You have to know about the structure of plasma membrane. If you look into the diagram, okay, this diagram here shows what? It is a plasma membrane, okay? It is a plasma membrane in this diagram here. It is a plasma membrane. It is a zoom-in version of plasma membrane, okay? The question will ask, what is this plasma membrane known as a model, okay? There are two scientists who created a name for them. Okay, the name for them is known as fluid mosaic model. Okay, who created this? Okay, it's two scientists. It's known as S. J. Singer or G. L. Nicholson. Their name is not important, but what they create is important. It's known as the fluid mosaic model, right? Why is it called fluid mosaic model? It must have a reason behind. It. Just like you know, when your parents name you, I don't know what's your name lah. Whoever who watched the video lah. Okay, let's say your parents name. Your name, okay, it must have a reason behind it, right? Maybe they like this, maybe they like the name very much, maybe it's their idol name, maybe it's because a name from a whatever book they read, maybe it's an author name, or maybe it's their hopefully it's not their ex boyfriend, ex girlfriend name. Okay, okay, so let's say my name, okay. I actually used to ask, what is the meaning of my name? Because my name is W A I L I N G, right? As you all can see, right? Okay, why link? My dad said no meaning, like definitely no meaning, like, like no meaning at all. Then I say, huh? Then what is the purpose of this name? This is this nice? So then a few years back, I don't know which year, about a few years back, he has a ghost movie, Japanese ghost movie. 
it is known as this one exactly the same because in english it has a term it's w-a-i-l it's called whale a uh, whaling is a another another it, it, it's, it's a it's a it's the ghost movie name it's called whaling apparently it is a ghost crying sound if i'm not mistaken lah. so yeah that is the meaning of my name after i googled it a bit sad but yeah i embrace my name so it doesn't matter what is your name they must have a reason behind your name okay don't worry about it and what is the meaning of fluid mosaic model based on the term that you know right fluid means what it's like water okay it's like water mosaic is a pattern like your tiles so your floor tiles mosaic why is it called fluid characteristic because this entire thing they can move freely or they can move sideways they can move freely or they can move sideways which shows a fluid characteristic sideways we call it as laterally laterally means sideways like it's the same meaning because you learn this in chapter one lateral means at the side lah, okay fluid characteristic and the protein built it forms a mosaic pattern as i mentioned mosaic is a pattern where it looks like a towel floor towels okay this is a mosaic now in exam question they ask you to explain what is fluid mosaic model or they ask you to explain the model it is named by the two scientists so the model name is what fluid mosaic model or right? fluid mosaic model it depends on the mark if the mark is like two three marks you're gonna write the entire thing in the box okay if it's only like one to two marks you can write this sentence this sentence here is the one that you learn in kssm syllabus the new syllabus are where the components are not rigid but static what is the component here refers to the component here it refers to phospholipid and the protein we will learn about the phospholipid and protein later don't worry about it but it's a component inside lah. so when they move they can move freely they can move constantly but it forms a dynamic structure that's why it's called fluid mosaic model they must have a meaning when they name a certain thing yeah, of course everything in biology it has a certain meaning of it you don't learn biology blindly because it's like that it has a meaning of every single term on usually like, okay now when you zoom in and see this diagram you can see there are many many colors here of course in exam there's no color lah. right now i give you color what there's like blue color red color orange color and green color so there are four colors here what is the main color that you can see? It's like red and blue color, right? That's the main one. Red and blue is the most you can find in this diagram, right? Now, I'm going to focus on this red and blue color first. Red and blue color first. First, this red and blue color as a one, we call it as phospholipid, okay? The red and blue color as a one, we call it as phospholipid, phospholipid. Now, in this case, if you zoom in and see a phospholipid, you can see it has a round shape and like a leg, like two legs or something like that. Two legs, okay, like a tail. So this head, it has a name as well. We call it as polar phosphate head. The tail is called two non-polar fatty acid tail. Why is it called two? Because it has two tails. One is polar, one is non-polar, okay? One is fatty acid. Fatty acid is a fat, uh. If you notice, it also mentioned what? It says polar phosphate head. It is hydrophobic the two non-polar fatty acid tail it is hydrophobic uh, it's not it's hydrophilic sorry did i mention hydrophilic uh, hydrophilic and hydrophobic okay so one is hydrophilic one is hydrophobic what does hydro means hydro means water okay what does phobic means okay phobic uh? phobic you know in english is called phobia like you don't like right so this one what don't like they don't like water if they don't like water, they will face inwards. The head, they like water, right? They were attracted by water. So you can see the arrangement is what? The head is outside, the tail is inside. This arrangement, the head is outside, the tail is inside. So that's why they call hydrophilic and hydrophobic. Hydrophilic, hydrophobic. Now, this phospholipid, they must have two layers. Cannot only be one, it must have two layers. This two layer is called what? It's called phospholipid by layer phospholipid bilayer what does bi means bi means two layer means layer la. okay layer la. okay why is it called phospholipid because the head is called phosphate that's why it's called phosphor why is it called lipid because as i mentioned fatty acid is a fat fat is a lipid so that's why it's called phospholipid bilayer they don't call lipid phosphor because the head comes first ma. the head is the phosphate head right so that's why it's called phospholipid bilayer so it has two layer here phospholipid bilayer so this is uh 
a barrier, okay? It works as a barrier. So they will control what can come in, what cannot come in, right? This is a phospholipid barrier. Now, besides the red color and the blue color one, we're going to look at the orange color one. The orange color one, right? It also has the most, right? If you compare the rest of the color, you also have the most, right? This orange color thing or yellow, yellow color, orange color thing, it is a protein, okay? This protein has two types. One is carrier protein. The other one is pore protein. What is a carrier protein? What is a pore protein? In your syllabus, right, some of the book, they don't write pore protein anymore. They write what? They write channel protein. Uh, in your textbook, it should be channel protein. Lah. If your teacher still teach you pore protein, actually, it's not a wrong answer. It's a correct answer as well. So it depends on the teacher whether it is a channel protein or pore protein. It's the same thing, okay? We're going to look at pore protein first because we have to learn how to differentiate the both of them, right? What does pore means in English? Pore means it's a whole. This is a whole, right? It's called pore, right? So that's why pore protein is always open. It's like a tunnel. It's like a channel, okay? Channel is like a hole. It's always open. It's always, always open. So this is what we call as a channel protein or a pore protein. It is always open. But for a carrier protein, uh, it's different. Carrier protein, right, is not always open. Either they open one side, or they close one side, or they close the entire thing. This is a carrier protein. Open one side, close the entire thing, or open the bottom part. So it can only open one side, like they cannot open entire thing one. Sometimes carrier protein appear to be in this diagram. Sometimes it appears to be in this diagram as well, this one here, uh, this one, okay? This one here, also a carrier protein, and they have their own specific site. Different shape, right? Okay, they have different shape, right? So they, they also close one part, open one part, now, right? So this, the purple color line that I draw, right? They have a specific shape. All of this shape here, we call it as active site. What is it, an active site? Like how you play a puzzle or Lego, only the suitable shape can fit into it, right? If it's not fit into it, then it means they, are, they don't match, okay? Same as this thing, only the specific shape or only the correct shape, they can fit into active side. So let's say this is a round shape, okay? Only a round shape can fit into active side. The rectangular one or the diamond one, they cannot fit into active side. So this is what we call as active side. All of the carrier protein, they have their own active side. They will allow a certain things to pass through. They don't allow everything to pass through. They only allow a certain thing to pass through. This is a carrier protein. So it can be open one side or close the entire thing also can. Sometimes this diagram here also shown as a carrier protein. So it depends on the question. Lah. So carrier protein comes in many different forms. Lah. Okay, they must have their own active site lah, if it's a detailed diagram. Okay, another diagram that you can see here is what the one in green color, guys. Can you see the one in green color? So the one in green color, if you look carefully, okay, you can see the attach at two different areas. Number one, they attach with the protein. This is a protein, right? The other one, they attach with the head. Correct. Now, if they attach with the protein and the green color part here, we call it as a carbo, uh, polysaccharide chain. Polysaccharide is a carbohydrate. It's a type of carbohydrate. So when they join together, it is known as a glycoprotein. Why is it called glyco? You know there's a term called glycogen, but it can be found in the carbohydrate. So it's a glycoprotein. When they attach to protein, it's called glycoprotein. If they attach with the lipid, okay, this is the phospholipid bilayer, right? Lipid, right? Okay, if they attach with the lipid, it's known as a glycolipid. Glycolipid, glycoprotein and glycolipid. So you have to see the location where they attach to, either to the protein or either to the lipid, the phospholipid. Doesn't matter where, the function will be the same. What is the function? Number one, act as a receptor to hormone. So the purpose of it is to stabilize the membrane. Like, okay, they want to stabilize the membrane. And uh, how they stabilize the membrane is by forming a hydrogen bond. Why is it called hydrogen bond? Because it's with water. Water is H2O. Obviously, the one that combine water together is H, right? The hydrogen, right? So that's why you have the hydrogen bond. The other one, which I think is more important, they will act as an antigen for cell identification. What does the antigen mean? Because you will learn this antigen in the next few chapter as well. Antigen means a marker, okay? A identification. For example, right now, me, in order to prove I am me, I have my IC, right? In order to prove that it is a, a bacteria, they also mark antigen, it has a marker to mark who they are. So this is also an antigen for a cell identification. The other function of glycoprotein uh, in your syllabus, I don't think they will ask you, but just for you to know, just in case you see this question, right? 
glycoprotein and glycolipid, they can also allow you to differentiate which one is inside the cell, which one is outside the cell. Because we know, right, plasma membrane, okay, let's say this is a cell, right? You have inside and you have outside, right? This, this round thing here, it is a plasma membrane, right? How do we know which one is inside, which one is outside? Okay, if there is glycoprotein and glycolipid, confirm it is outside, okay? When there is no glycolipid and glycoprotein, it must be inside. Why? Because glycolipid and glycoprotein is too large to diffuse across. They will not pass through the phospholipid bilayer. They will not pass through the carrier protein, the channel protein also, because they are too large. So that's why this is always outside. When you see glycolipid, glycoprotein or glycolipid, right? Confirm it is outside the cell. This is outside the cell over here, outside the cell, outside the cell, okay? Inside, we have the cytoplasm, uh, nucleus, those are, those are the inside one. Okay, another one. There's one more thing in the cell. I don't know whether you guys notice or not. Is I don't know, red color? Is it red color over here? Uh, the red color thing, this, this thing here, red color thing, okay? This is known as a cholesterol. We all understand that cholesterol is a bad thing, right? You know, it's like a bad thing to our body health, right? If you have more or less. Actually, cholesterol, we have two types. One is a good cholesterol, one is a bad cholesterol. But it's not related to the plasma membrane. Like. The purpose of cholesterol in plasma membrane is very important. Why? Because it's to make plasma membrane more flexible, stable, and stronger, and also less permeable to water-soluble substances. This is a question that they always ask you in the exam. They ask you, what is the function of phospholipid by, uh, what is the function of cholesterol? The function of cholesterol is to make plasma membrane more flexible, stable, and stronger. If you want to write less permeable to water, also can. But by writing stronger, flexible, and stable is good enough already. Eh? Definitely good enough for you to score the, the one or two marks already. Because we have three functions here. What? Stronger, stable, and flexible, right? So you have three marks already. So this is the diagram of your plasma membrane, what we call it as a fluid mosaic model. So now that you understand how does this thing work, right? This thing here is so, so, so important to you. Because usually for chapter three, it will be either the first or second question in your exam. Confirm you will see chapter 3 or even chapter 2. Lah. Okay, so this is the first class of chapter 3. For the next video, I will do the next subtopic as well, okay? So any question, you can ask me below or you can ask me in my Instagram as well. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys. See you guys next time.